Hello everyone, it's time for another scroller box and boy am I excited for this one, even though I was really confused when I first opened it. So let's go, once I get this box open it was a bit of a struggle. Scroller box is a monthly subscription box that arrives to your door filled with delicious art supplies. If you would like to try it out yourself I put the link in the description box below for you to check out, not sponsored by the way. Wham! We have some sweet treats. So we have this see-through paper that I first thought was just some kind of disposable protection paper sheet. I had no idea why they would include that in the box, so I was just about to throw it away. Good thing that I didn't. We have the featured artist, which is Loch Ness, and oh, they have redesigned the card. It looks really pretty, always nice with a fresh look. Then we have this super fancy envelope, which contains 10 sheets of pencil paper, 5 smooth ones and 5 rough ones. I love this, I think it is so great that it includes different types of paper for us to try out. This is Carolina Gelfi Arts and Craft Paper 220 GSM. We have the list with all the supplies, which is super handy if you have no idea what the supplies in the box are or how to use them. You can get some very helpful tips and tricks here. Also, this is the box of June, so yeah, I am a little behind, but I haven't received August box yet, so I'm not that behind. Then we have this writer for vellum pen from SIG. It is double-ended with one fine and one thicker bullet nib. I wasn't quite sure what this vellum thing was, but it might have something to do with the tracing paper. Then we have this pen that is two-way glue, also from SIG. And when I first saw this, I thought, what the heck, what am I supposed to do with a glue pen? I honestly was so confused by this whole box with a tracing paper and glue and vellum pen, even though now afterwards it may seem pretty obvious. Anyways, we have a Perfection Eraser Pencil 7057 from Faber-Castell. I have something similar to this, but mine isn't double-ended. It is perfect for erasing smaller details though. The pink end is for graphite and color pencils, and the white one is apparently for ink. Then lastly we have 5 double-ended color pencils. These are from Chameleon, which is the same brand that makes these self-blending markers, you know. I've tried them a couple of times on this channel. The color pencils have one lighter end and one darker end, and these should apparently be great for blending the colors without having to use a bunch of different color pencils. You can just draw with one end and then turn the pencil around and use the other end for either highlights or shading depending on which end you're using. Pretty interesting idea, I have to say. We also have the scroller challenge, in which you're supposed to use all supplies in the box to create something, and this box prompt or challenge is twisted reality. Still, I was so confused about this see-through paper, it isn't mentioned in the supply list. However, there is this little hint on how to use the supplies written up in the theme section, which I usually never read, so oh well, I know now what to do at least. So since we have two types of paper, I'm gonna try out the supplies on both the smooth and the rough one. I really like the transition between the darker and the lighter color tone, it looks really smooth. As you can see, there is this clear difference between the papers. On the rough one, you can see the texture of the paper through the color, like little white dots kind of, which I know that some people really don't like, and I kind of agree, it feels a little finished. However, I do prefer paper with a little bit of grip for color pencils, but this might be a little too much even for me. So for the actual artwork, I will go with a smooth paper.
And I was quite surprised on how good the glue pen was. I tried gluing these little pieces of paper on it and they really stuck on there. So even if this box confused me a lot, it ended up being one of my favorites in a while. Not that the supplies themselves are my favorite or anything, but I really love the theme or prompt and what you can do with it, but more about that later. So I first started with drawing this super cute little cat that will not be that cute that much longer, so stay tuned for that, I guess. And I'm not even gonna apologize anymore for drawing a lot of cats. It is what you will get on this channel. It is even in my video intro, so you have been warned. The vellum pen also worked very well on paper, apparently, and I really liked how the line art turned out. I haven't worked with color pencils in a while, and this chameleon pencils was very fun and easy to work with. It was really convenient that you could just turn the pencil around and get a different color. The only downside I can see with these pencils is that you might end up using one of the sides more than the other, and they are also shorter than normal pencils since they're only half the size. So when you run out of one color and you have to buy a new one, you basically have to buy two new colors. The pencils layered and blended very nicely, I had no trouble mixing the different colors. The best way to blend color pencils, in my opinion, is to start lightly and then build up the layers and the color intensity. You don't want to saturate the paper too much from the beginning if you want to layer a bunch of different colors. I tried to incorporate the blue as shading in the whole drawing to make it less flat and to tie it together a bit more to make it more cohesive. Alright, so now when I made this adorable little kitten, it is time to apply the prompt of this box, which was Twisted Reality. I used a glue pen to attach the tracing paper to the top of the drawing, and as I said before, I am really impressed with a glue pen. I had no idea that such thing even existed, and that is why I love these art supply boxes, and that they can still surprise me with supplies I haven't seen before. So now my goal is to make this piece more twisted, so I am basically tracing the shape of the cat, but I tried to make it a little more demon-like. I added some horns and some extra eyes and these skeleton wings, I don't know, just some things to make it look a little more evil. This part was definitely my favorite, it was so fun twisting the drawing into something else. As I mentioned before, this may be one of my favorite boxes so far, and I think I say that every time, but this time it is because it added one more step and depth to the art and the whole drawing process. It is such a cool idea and I would never have thought of making something like this myself. So I'm using the writer for vellum pen to fill in the lines and to draw over the parts of the drawing underneath that I don't want to be visible in the twisted version. I made a cat skinnier with damaged ears and a damaged tail, and the cushion it sits on I turned into a pile of bones that it has collected from all the dogs out there, you know the bones that dog sticks down in the ground for whatever reason, and now they will never find them again. Hmm, that's a bit lame though, but I want to keep it family friendly. I had to use a white gel pen at the end to cover up the pink underneath though. And I kind of knew what vellum was, I figured it has something to do with this transparent paper, but I had to google it anyway because I'm curious, and yes, there is this kind that is called paper vellum, which is this tracing paper that I'm drawing on right now, but real vellum is this super fine thin parchment that is originally made from skin, from baby cows, so yeah, that's nice. 
So I think my least favorite supply in this box is the eraser pencil. I think the nib was too flexible to erase with, it was a bit floppy and hard to control. I have another eraser pencil too with a much different nib and it works great. I don't really have a favorite but I liked using the smooth paper with the color pencils and the vellum pen, it was a very nice combination. So I hope you liked this drawing and the twisted version too. I had a lot of fun making this and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So thanks Scrollerbox for sending me this to play with and thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new here and click on the little bell icon to get notified every time I post new art and videos and I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats, bye!